I'm going to start off with this very basic question. Folks, I know we have farmers in here. We have all kinds of people in different fields. But I want to ask you this very, very, very basic question to start off. How many of you in your grade school, your high school, either was a parent, a grandparent, somebody, or a teacher, or a professor, when you were dealing with out, going out in the natural system, doing a walk, or doing anything you've done in your whole life, and you come in context to this, how many of you have had somebody mentor you and say, you know what, if you see how beautiful this natural system, how many have been told, uh, let me give you an example, when I was in college, I asked, I asked nobody, well, I'm here blabbering here, but here's the question I'm going to ask you. How many of you guys have been exposed to somebody that says, you know, the way we should really farm is that we should farm in nature's image. We should work with it. We should collaborate with it. We should nurture it. We should synergize with it. Not to spray it to death, not to till it to death, not to genetically modify it to death, but to understand it. Has anybody in your life has exposed you to that early in your life? Please raise your hand. When I go all over the country, do you know that less than a thousandth of a percent raise their hand? They talked about today how we are going to promote, uh, promote cover crops for 20 million acres. Folks, we have a whole society that's completely disconnected from the land. How are we going to promote covers if we do not have the understanding why we do the covers? Farmers, once they have the understanding, they will find a way to make it work because they understand that's what this is about. And I get frustrated because we talk, well, we've done, we, we need more research. Really? We've had covers since the Roman times, ladies and gentlemen. There has been research. We have so much research, you almost get tired of looking at it. We're going to talk about the principles today that, you learn, that we will learn that will change the way we do business. And so here's, let's start off with the principles that we, we talked about. I usually start off, we're going to start off in the reverse way. I usually start off with the, the demonstrations. But this way I'm going to start off differently. Ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to change this planet, and it's not just the country but the planet, we have to facilitate understanding. And these are the principles that I'm talking about. There are many methods. <laughs> there are many. It is principles that I want us to learn. I can do it with the principles that I have learned from the natural ecosystem and a shovel. I don't need complex models. I have to be an observer, willing to do critical thinking. This quote touches it very nicely. It is about principles. It is the principles. And I'm going to show you how farmers have applied this and watching the video, applied the principles and changed their operation. But here is the key if we're going to change our country and be sustainable and the planet. It's right here. This is the problem, not the tools. Cover crops is a tool. I'm not, I'm not about tools. No-till is a tool. I'm here about understanding, ladies and gentlemen, then how to use the tool properly in its context, okay? It's about this, and how are we gonna do it? Through education, through these demonstrations we're gonna talk about. This is what I'm about. Look how we've had tools for many years. Don't you think we had covers back in the 30s? In fact, that was the first thing that was cost shared in NRCS in the 30s, covers. Jefferson and, and, um, and uh, George Washington were lamenting how people weren't covering the land and they were using too much monocultures back 300 years ago. We've had this tool for a long, long time. In fact, that's the only way you could farm is with covers. I have said many times, I can farm without fertilizer, I can farm without herbicides, but I cannot farm without a living plant. Because that's what feeds the system. Look how we're doing in 79 years. This was taken last month, ladies and gentlemen. 
enamored with tools, enamored with programs. We can't do that anymore. So here's what my, look at this. This is what's taken last year. Ladies and gentlemen, our context is globally and nationally as we have degraded soils and degraded resources globally. It's not just our country, it's everywhere. If we're gonna address our climatic issues, we have to heal our soils. They're connected. Here is a really interesting article. It was written by Dr. Milton Eisenhower, president of KSU, 1948. It was given in this uh, publication. He says, at that time, back in 48, they were spending a dollar and they were only getting 10 cents of conservation for every dollar they spent. And what was the attitude that he put out there? He says, it's our attitude. It's the way we think about the resource. We don't value it as a society. I make an argument, we need to take this soil health movement to the general public. This should be taught to grade school kids, junior high, to the whole planet. Because I was asked years ago, who should learn about soil health? And I told the Chief White, everybody. It should be part of our curriculum, connecting our people back to the land. You know what's the easiest way to connect people back? Grow a garden. And here's the other problem, programs. Back then, we were trying to give it with money, to fix the problem with money. We'll never fix the problem. Here are the principles that we have learned. Where do we pick up these principles? The first one, cover the soil, grow in a living root 24 seven. Synergize with diversity, diversity, diversity. Diversity. Integrate animals. But here's the thing that I want us to think about. Understand our context. Our farm and ranch was hewn out of the natural ecosystem. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. We need to understand our social and ecological context. Very, very critical. See, because I know I am, when I get up in the morning, I am 99% of my problem. So once I have proper context, I'm ready to go. So if I have the, it's the way I look at things, ladies and gentlemen. Eight years ago, I changed the way I look at the system. I went to school for eight years in the university, and I walked away with a very reductionist thought process. It did not help me. My thought process now is holes. See, nature in her patterns, holistic, and it's not a hippie word. Hippies didn't come up with that word. Great scientists that understood that nature works in holes and patterns. This is what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. We have a functioning water cycle right here. These ecosystem processes are happening all the time. How many farmers get up in the morning and goes, hey, I'm gonna go out there and check if my water cycle's working, my nutrient cycle is working, all those ecosystem processes, are they functioning on my operation? Do you have an eye for the land? This is what we teach in our class. How to look at the ecosystem correctly. This is a dysfunctional ecosystem. Carbon's going off, water's evaporating, this one is functional. What's one key thing to understand about these ecosystems? They're connected. They're all one. You can't see the water cycle being completed because most of it's in the vapor phase. It goes into the vapor and then it goes into the soil, but you can't see that process, but you can see the effect of it. And we're gonna talk about how we can measure the effect of it. This is a functioning water cycle and this is what I see all over the planet. Temperatures get up to 140 degrees on that soil, ladies and gentlemen. I had a rancher tell me, he says, when he flew over bare soil, his little Cessna would shake because the heat coming from those soils, and we have millions of uh, acres that are bare and not covered. So that is a dysfunctional water cycle. The water is not entering. Keep, people say, well, I saw pictures of little buffers and all those. Those are diaper practices, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We gotta address the raindrop right the moment it lands. That is proactive, not reactive. It hits the diaper, it's over. Game is over. I want it to go into the giant buffer, the soil. That's where it's gotta go. All of this system has to. 
chronic physical, chemical, and biological stresses impact that system. Tillage is a chronic stress. Chemical fungicides, insecticides, they're chronic stress. Now think about this. Our bodies do well with some stress. That's how you build muscle. But it cannot handle chronic stress. So if you're lifting weights, running 10 miles, you're smoking, and you drink beer every night, three six-packs, you are putting your body under chronic stress. The ecosystem can't handle fumigating every time you go out there and put your, your soybeans three, four, five times, and you kill the mycorrhizae. And then you do tillage, massive tillage. And then you go and put lots of chemical fertilizer salts out there. Chronic stress. You shift the soil food web. System can't handle chronic stress. It can handle acute stresses, like crop removal. Biological stress, overgrazing. It's right here. This is the part I missed when they taught me in school. Right here, to look right into the aggregate. And it's these beautiful creatures, right, that, that complete the water cycle. How many would ever have thought that the water cycle was complete by biotic organisms? They're the ones that make the glues that keep the pores open. And Jill's going to talk about them, how awesome they are. We miss that because, see, we don't see them. See, it's easier to teach a child about ecology than an adult. You know why? When you teach a child about ecology, when they see the elephant, they go, whoa, it's beautiful. When they see the bugs, they go, whoa, it's beautiful. Adults don't do that. Oh, the elephant, yeah, it's awesome, majestic. Bug. Hmm. can't think that way. All of it's beautiful. All of it's important. Now, what can we measure in Rick's test? We can measure if a system is fragile and the natural ecosystem anti-fragile. Nature is anti-fragile, ladies and gentlemen. We have a majority of our farms in between here. Unfortunately, we have them here. That's a fragile ecosystem cannot handle the drought, cannot handle the flood. It's addicted to inputs. I want to reduce the addiction to inputs. I want it to make it healthy. How do you do it? We're going to talk about that. You have to make it personal knowing. My suggestion is we got to go from informational knowing to personal knowing. There's a huge difference. Let me tell you the difference between informational knowing and personal knowing. Informational knowing is data information. Research. Great. And you go, oh, I see. But personal, when it goes into your soul, into your inner being, and you understand, you go, oh, I see. There's a huge distinction. When you go to personal knowing, landowners will do this practices because it becomes personal. They're connected to the land. This is why I wrote it this way. The soil is naked, hungry, thirsty, and running a fever. It's personal knowing. Unless our producers and our society goes into a personal le level, personal knowing, we will not heal our land. It'll all be academic and talking points. There's the instrument, very simple. A shovel. Do you know how many landowners go in there and have an intimate connection with their land? How many landowners actually go out there and dig in the soil? you would be shocked, very little. In a group of 1,400 farmers, I had less than 1% raise their hand that they used that to find the pulse and connect with their soil. A shovel, a simple shovel. Here's the science that we should have been promoting since the beginning, ecology. Why do I love this? It's about relationship. My relationship to the microbe, relationship to the cow, to the grass, to the organism. It's relationship and understanding interconnectedness. Do you know why, what science has actually promoted ecology more than anything else? Quantum physics, quantum connection. They're finding out everything is connected. Is it a particle or is it a wave or is it both? Connectness. That's what we need to understand. When so you impact something on your farm, you impact this, you impact this, you impact this, you impact this. You impact everything. Native Americans didn't have a special reactor or they quantum, they didn't understand quantum mechanics. But they look at this. 
with all things, in all things, we are relatives. Wow, pretty simple. They understood that hundreds of years ago. See, soil health, if I used to use one word to explain soil health, it's biomimicry. Mimicking the biology. Or another word, eco-mimicry. If you ever get a chance to listen to her, have you heard her, Jill? She's a wonderful speaker. She's talking about why don't we mimic nature? She's got all kinds of research. People I hear, well, we don't have enough research. Really? Well, nature's got 3.8 billion years of research and development. It's been telling the templates right there. What did Gabe Brown say today? Follow the template. It's pretty simple. 10, 30 million species with well-adapted solutions. The ideas come from biology, ladies and gentlemen. Guess where Velcro came from? From a weed. Guy found it on, the engineer found it on his dog. Hey, well, why don't we create Velcro? Where do you think we learn how to fly? You know, biomimicry. Mimicking the biology. Her argument is, and here, biomimicry is even in the ancient scriptures. But ask the beast and they will teach you. There's a big proclamation. It's telling you every day you walk out there, but you have to walk out there and be an observer. How about, here is what she's saying. We need to mimic that prairie and forest. There's where we got the principles. What does it do? It's covered. It's covered. We're going to go. It's covered 24-7. It's, guess what else? It's diverse, and they have animals in the system. All the principles we've been talking about that we are spousing in NRCS. Okay? There it is, our multi-species cover crops. We want that template. We want that same architecture. That's what we're doing with our multi-species cover crops. And when we do that, guess what? They will come. You don't have to do anything. Just stop spraying so much and let them come. Look at the power of biology. You have a compaction issue? Let the biology take care of it. So we're growing covers all over the place. It's spreading all over. I better get quickly here because we want to go away from controlling command agriculture. I want to go to this. Livestock as a proxy. Mimic it. Look at the biology doing its business. And look how this is Gabe. That's the proxy I want to see like buffalo. That's what we want to observe in our in our type of system. Look at the look at the beautiful colors and everything else working together. I want to do this to do this. It's simple. Follow the buffalo. There's Mr. Gabe. Now all these principles work in synchrony. The more you apply these, guess what the results are? Look at right here with covers. Cropland with life, no livestock, with livestock, and look at the native range. Hmm. Connecting the dots, putting them together. Now, last slide. Guys, this gentleman, these guys from Kansas live in this area, very drought restricted area. These guys under seven inches, look what they did. They do mob grazing, they do, um, they do, uh, uh, they got mob grazing and they do multi-species cover crop and zero till. Look at their corn, only three or five years. Look at the neighbors, under seven inches. The principles are simple. Look at the difference, great teaching moment. So with that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, the principles are simple. Cover it 24 seven, emulate the nature, integrate animals into the system, cover it 24 seven. Food, habitat, food, habitat, context. Now, to prove the point is, come up Johnny and young lady, come on here, we're gonna show you the results of a functioning water ecosystem. This is the perfect test, it's called, we call it the aggregate slake test. Either call it the aggregate stability or the slake test. What we're gonna hear, you're gonna hold, you're gonna be the, you're gonna be the no-till. Johnny, you're gonna be the disturbed guy, right. tillage. What we're gonna do before you get ready, this is measurable. This has been around for a long time, ladies and gentlemen. This test has been around for a long time. How do we know that the water cycle, the nutrient cycle is working on this? We'll show you. In that field, that field that she's holding, that soil, is 40-year no-till, has not been tilled in 40 years, 
He's been using multi-species cover crops and manure. He has not used chemical fertilizer in 18 years, has not used phosphorus in nine. He's gone down from five herbicides down to one herbicide. What you, this, this one is conventional till garden. No, farm that grows vegetables. They're a mile apart. They're both Cecil Sandy Clay Loams, and this one's got half a percent. That one's 4.6% organic matter in North Carolina. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drop those clods in and we're gonna see water to rush in to fill the pore spaces. We wanna see which one's gonna withstand the forces. If the pores collapse, that means the water's gonna run off. We don't wanna see that. Ready, go ahead and put it in. Let's see what happens. Hmm, conventional tillage, the biotic glues are gone, the organic matter, you shifted the ecological system, bacteria dominant ecosystem. The glues were eaten by opportunist bacteria. This ones are all intact. It's a functioning soil healthy ecosystem. Let's take it further. Let's go ahead and pour water. This is water with food coloring. Let's make sure she's the no-till. You're the heavily disturbed guy. Right, yeah. Ready, pour. Let's make it rain. To me, I want to get the water in the soil. I don't want it to run off. Look at the no-till, ladies and gentlemen. This is the no-till, and look how quickly I took both soils out of their context, and I just touched the edge, and it took it all. Look how the water is infiltrating. The pores are intact. The biotic glues that the organisms created kept the pore space open. Remember that raindrop's coming at 15, 20 miles an hour. This one, there are no glues in that system. There is none. Am I done? Oh, I'm sc that's scary. Can you imagine that I'm actually, this is an anomaly. But ladies and gentlemen, do you see why this has been the most powerful tool for teaching soul health? This is the tool that has opened producers' minds. Can you imagine me talking to a bunch of herbicide fertilizer dealers and farmers? I let the soil speak. Let the soil speak. And I said, I'll take you to, your, we'll go do it on your own farm. It's a very simple test. Air dry it and go drop some clods in and get some water and check your farm. Has anybody got a quick question for Ray? Yep. We've got a couple minutes yet. Yep. In Sandy Soils, I have been to Florida and we did attempt that. It was interesting. I went to a wooded area where it has not been, it had mycorrhizal fungi wrapping around the sand particles. Both of those things, what happened is a majority of the sand fell in there, but guess where we had, where it hadn't been disturbed, most of the sand kept intact and all of it did not fall into the bottom of the container. So the fungus did hold some of the, uh, the sand particles. They wrapped themselves around it in a mesh, like a hairnet. So, yes. And then also they coat the particles. Those biotic glues coat the sanding particles and now you have cation exchange capacity. So that's pretty cool about these biotic glues that the organisms create. Okay. Is that water? Just regular water. And it's such a simple test. Now I've connected with you. Now I made it a personal knowing. See, when farmers see that and when they find out that their soil is falling apart, they take it personal. And they should. It's your operation. 